Do you think we're connected to them? We are, but I don't know what the sound is. I think there's one of them. I don't know if any of them reach. It would be nice, but they're not. And if not, just have him confirm that the process outlined is something he approves of. It's nine flat. Sort of like there, were two or three there were different responses. Well, I think they started with the same kind of page. Well, um, if you're not afraid to finish, so I just printed out the last one. That's them. Yeah. Hello. Chad, are you ready to get going? Uh, we can start a little bit. Uh, Tony has most of the notes. Is your audio still on on your end? Uh, on the TV? Yeah, it's still on. Okay. Yeah, it's still on. 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 Yeah, it's Start here and do it because you know we might be here forever. So what's in the packet is the a copy of the management letter and then a copy of the management response. The documents that follow that are the responses that have been received from the departments. So if we can you hear us? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's better. We're, we're just, we know Tony's not there yet, but we just want to get started going through the management letter responses. Well, maybe that should be the why, why don't we start with the minutes? Uh, I, I took a quick look, quick look, it seemed fine to me. Right. So why don't we approve the minutes, all right, and the next item, the management letter. Do you want to just start going through one of the response sections? Yes. So if we skip to the um, management response. The responses. It's called Response and Action Plan in Fiscal Year 2013 Audit Management Letter dated December 5, 2015. It's as of March 19, 
endorsed by the audit committee, and it was updated on April 16. There were a number of informational items which we don't need to go over. Um, there were four findings regarding the airport, and I thought they were going to be here, but I think they have they have a response that's in the packet. The first item was a variance between the accounting systems to the, the town and the airports. Um, I think that is actually resolved, and Tony should be able to confirm that. Or this might not even have been a Tony confirmation item, but it was something. Well, you want a page that starts implementation plan schedule immediate? Um, okay, so sorry. No. On the same page or no, not? I'm on the document. It doesn't say draft on it. So, okay, you printed out something that. There's something else in here. Okay. And that says draft. There is a further draft attached that again is, is, is a copy of the response, but it includes just the airport portion, everything right. in the blue. So it's towards the end. Yes, the response side. The double side is the same page. The response side in blue with the airport. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then on the back page, the security system, the bottom of the page, it says it's must go. Okay, so. Oh, not today. Um, I'm very, very sorry about this. I can see how confusing it is. The, the document that does not have draft on it at all, that's our response. That's been posted. That's definite. This thing that says draft on it was the airport used a draft to make its. Um, comments. I should have just right, extracted right. them out entirely. Um, sorry, I, it's. Mm -hmm. So you are the finding and recommendation starting with the Nantucket Memorial Airport. Yes. Page one four findings. Okay. Yes. And then you went to the next page. And they have. Um, I think I think their final response is in our action plan. So it had to do with, again, the accounts receivable processing. Let me. I know Tony went over their response, I believe, pretty extensively with them because there was some areas that we were a little uh, confused by. But I do believe they all came to a conclusion together. So, so just so we're clear, for example, in the middle of that second page, it says implementation plan schedule will provide. So since that's not here today, I assume we'll see a copy or it's being provided to somebody? Yes. Um, okay, I mean, I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I just I didn't get to that one. Okay. Okay. Just going in order for the airport, the account receivable processing item. This is what that's Okay. There were four components to this, so it's. Number one, accounts receivable for processing. This item has four components. Dating of transaction and dynamics. They had, they had an issue with the dating of their um, transactions into Munis versus the system that they use out there. And this had to do with their customer. Um, so, so what is the dynamic system? system? Is that, that's I mean, that's care. not their general ledger, is it? Which I thought was Great Plains. It so it must be it's Great Plains. It is Great Plains at the same time. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. I didn't know that. And when they sent their bills out at the end of the year and they got their customer payments in, they were backdating it to go against. Oh, here they are. That first item is supposed to have been resolved. Okay. Sure. And maybe we're going to have Tony um, confirm that. Item B is credit card transactions included in accounts receivable. This is the one that you just pointed out, Rick, that says the finance director and the airport manager will provide a written document that I can review by the end of 2014. Um, and 
what the airport's response is that I believe they're working on that. However, their business manager resigned recently, and they have a new person who I believe is here today. And they're working hard to get this done, but I don't believe it's done yet. Okay. So. The next item, number three, capital asset maintenance. The airport, this is just, they need to update their fixed asset inventory and establish a more regular review. That's in the works. That will continue happening. Vendor warrants, number four. Um, that's been resolved. Tom, I don't know if you want to add anything. Those are the four airport items. No, just on the assets. Um it was just a change, but there was a formatting change between the town got new software versus ours, so we're, we're going through that thing. Yeah, so. And one. No. so, so just so I understand, uh, we're going through it. It says uh, multiple accounts, and then it says accounting personnel, and then it says capital. I just don't see the vendor warrants. Yeah, vendor warrants is not on it. On number three, is I don't see it either, but I thought it was gone. Number four, it is. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Number four is not in the final um, multiple accounts for same customer. I think I think because those were actually resolved. Although I'm not I'm trying to remember why they're not in here. So then the next one is payroll. So we'll just keep moving here. Okay. I think there's this one I had caught up with before, but it starts with that. Okay. together because what's on top is our response right and then what's behind all of that is the departmental responses but they're not related that's right so this one this is draft on this is the it. airport's response oh, it's okay. got blue writing yeah i see that yeah. um but we're just realizing that somehow there's not a number four mm -hmm. in the okay. final so i need to figure out what happened to number four and put it back in there Okay. But we're all okay on number four, though. Yes. And yes. what the airport's response is, is that there, this had to do with the vendor warrants. The warrant approval page now has totals, batch numbers, and batch dates. The window for when commissioners can sign is also going to do. So they've addressed that. Okay. And after the draft, there's actually a, a, a copy of a warrant page included, just as an example. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I believe, do you guys want to add anything? Do you want to introduce? Oh, yeah, I'd like to introduce Jamie Miller, our new uh, finance manager. So, and uh, her background is in audit, so. <laughs> good. That's good news. But she's brand new, so. <laughs> okay, the next section is payroll. Five times for payroll. And what you'll see is um, a report from the treasurer. It looks like this. The treasurer will develop a written plan of action as to how to correct and improve the units reports with a description of how the information will be entered going forward as of date certain in consultation with the auditor and the units. So I think we're looking for an update on that. When Chad was here, when they were here for their actual visit last year, um, he and I talked about it and we looked at the units report and couldn't really figure out exactly what was going on. 
And there were some totals that weren't coming out in the end report that should have been there. Although we had the right payroll total, in, at the end, the little components weren't all matching up. So uh, we worked together via email. I worked with Eunice, and now the totals are on the report. And Chad has made it, Chad and I had emails again a couple months ago, Chad, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, a couple months ago, um, we had more emails and, um, you know, just copies back and forth. And I think we have it all under, I think it's all good now. Um, all the units numbers, yeah. those vendor numbers are coming out properly. They're all hitting where they should on the actual report. So I think we're good. And I know, yeah, and I know you had asked us to check it out before year end, and that's what we're going to do when we're there in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, is we're going to take a look at it on the payroll project aspect. So uh, we'll be able to give you feedback, and then I'll make sure that any of the year-end warrants and the warrants payable and all that stuff hopefully should be fairly clean for 14. Is, is, yeah, I saw, um, this is Tony, I, I'm here. How's everyone doing? Um, I thought um, what we were going to do is uh, look at what, uh, what Deb's done since um, the last audit and also uh, take a more comprehensive look at the payroll. Um, Libby, was that the, uh, the goal? that we were going to do something um, more comprehensive just to make sure that um, that things are going the way they should be or if there, there should be further uh, revisions or concerns. Yes, right. Yeah. Is this the issue? So just, just keeping that in mind. And all, that, that's, still the, that's still the game plan, right, to go through that um, process? Yes, yep, it is. Yep, we're going to talk about that after after the meeting. Um, Rick, right. I think we're just looking for a little bit of clarification right now on what the actual finding is on payroll warrant totals. You, you know, in the back of my mind, I remember okay. several discussions about where um, the totals from one report were the same as the other. That's correct. And is this resolving that so we only enter it once in theory or something like that? It appears to be resolving it again, but they're going to look closer at the reports when they get here for their for their visit. The stuff that, that Chad and I have emailed back and forth looks good, but it's much easier when we can line it all up when he's standing there with me and we're going to look at it from start to finish. Right, Chad? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah in answer to your question, the original question, um, the, the amount of the warrant that everybody was signing off on was not reconciling back to the actual payroll report activity. And so what Deb and her team have been working on is to basically take all that detail activity and figure out how it reconciles back to the warrant. And uh, it sounds like they're, they're there. So that, that, that was really our concern. Okay. And it seems to me these other things, the uh, withholdings, are somewhat related in trying to get the Maybe numbers to tie out. Yeah, exactly. Which I guess will lead to my question about the, the IRS garnishments then. Yes. Is that uh, what's the plan going forward to, to deal with that? We're going to hand over, we're going to hire a tax lawyer. Okay. That's so fine. I'm going to get all the back up together and we're going to get a tax lawyer to, to go back and at, at some point, someone mentioned something like this might be a timing difference or, you know, they took money out before we got it in the account on our books. I have no idea, but. It's, it's, does that does that ring a bell? Where did I hear that? I'm sure. Some, I some place I didn't. It can, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, some of it is. If, if you're making a deposit on the 30th of the month, you don't get credit till this quarter, and then you have to get them to flip it back and forth. So, we just need somebody to examine it. So, so, so it may be that it's uh, anyway reconcilable or mm -hmm. something. Okay. Um, I don't want to confuse anything. But going back to the airport for just one second to explain, I now remember what happened with that item number oh, the vendor. the vendor warrants. What Tom had done was made his comments on the draft management letter. That item number four was not even in the final management letter. So it's irrelevant at this point okay. because it was never in the final management letter, which is why it's not in the action plan. So, back to payroll. Just one other quick question, payroll. For example, for a long time we had you know, differences in the dental withholdings, just to mm -hmm. pick an example. Are we on a current basis 
comfortable, that when we withhold dental, that we're you know, doing the right number now? At least? We're looking at withholdings monthly. Amanda and I, we have Amanda in, in place in the, as the benefits administrator, and she and I are working very closely on doing it each month, all of the withholdings. So that was the item after the IRS, IRS yep. garnishment um, Tony, did you have a chance to look at the payroll action plan responses, and do you have any comments, or are, are we thinking that a lot of this is going to be captured in the operational review? Yeah, I didn't, um, I, I didn't look at it in significant detail, because I know we're going to spend quite a bit of time on it uh, when we... Regardless of what I read, uh, I think we're going to be spending a lot of time on it with um, with some of your staff, uh, trying to just just you know look at what else is out there. And I know there's, there are some concerns that you and um, Greg have um, communicated to uh, to the firm. So um, so I didn't I didn't look at it in depth. Um, I can take a um, look at that now. Uh, I was going to just kind of chime along as you guys read. So. Um, I don't know. Um, well, the issues with it, the withholdings, the uh, the IRS garnishment, and uh, and the posting, right? Yeah. Those were the three issues. I think what we're going to look at is more de detail, right? The way it's processed, right. the way um, the, the the output. Um, what these findings relate to more is the actual way it gets to the general ledger, which will be part of the project also, but it's like a little different because that's really not going to change. You're always going to be posting uh, to the general ledger no matter what. So, um, so I think once Chad and Deb sit down in a couple of weeks and go through it, we'll be in a better position to, um, to understand if it's fixed or not. And the holdings, we should be able to provide some guidance relative to, you know, getting them reconciled a year in. It, because of, like, the lump sum payrolls and stuff for the teachers, it's going to happen in about um, 30 days or so. It, it, it makes it a little more difficult because not everything zeroes out, per se, at, at the end of the month. Um, so we can go over that with everyone in the accounting office, too, and, and chime in. So, so just so we're clear, I mean, I'm looking at page 4, item 5, withholding account deep deficits, yep. right? And you go down to the responsibility treasurer implementation plan, and the first line it says, before the end of F1, the treasurer will provide a written report. So that's a future event coming back that will come back to the audit committee, as I, as I see this. Is that correct? Yes, I, and I assume once, I, I figure that, I don't know where he went, Chad, <laughs> will actually sit down with us when he gets here and we will do an actual payroll process mm -hmm. step by step so he can see now he and me he may have suggestions that say oh this really should post over here as a holding mm -hmm. and until it posts all the way through to, to hit the thing you know we on June yeah, that's great all yeah. I'm just saying is eventually we're going to get a written report yeah. or something yeah. we don't have to go through all the yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these suggestions we're actually going to have to um, we're going to actually have to work with, like, like this. This is not, you know, the way Deb has laid it out and everything looks, looks fine and uh, it looks like a, you know, a game plan. But until we actually sit down and go through it and walk through the process, it, it is difficult to comment on it. Just, um, yeah. you know, at this stage in the game. So why don't we move on? Okay. The next item is. Um, water, I believe, and I think all of the water items are resolved. The first one is posting of water and sewer receipts, um, and that's been completed. The second is a refund posting mm -hmm. error. Um, Bob provided a re written report already previously. And previously, so it's taken care of. Revenue detail, um, I think uh, I don't, I'm not totally clear on all of the exact details of this one, but there was a, a sort of a differing procedure between the auditor and the way the water company classifies water and sewer revenue. Um, but I, I, and I'm not sure, did, did water and the auditor talk about that? Are you guys on the same page now with it? I, I, think, um, I think with that, uh, 
water and finance, finance actually spoke with each other, and uh, that has been fixed as we speak. So um, we don't have to spend a lot of time on it. But basically, uh, the way the revenue was being reported out of Munis and the way the revenue was been being reported in the water department was done at two different levels. It was more detail, and we thought more detail would be better uh, going up to Munis. So I think that I believe right now they are in sync, uh, from what I understand, and. Um, that was a pretty simple fix. We will take a look at that also uh, when we're in uh, when we're in town. Just just a question. I, in, in, again, uh, we send out a bill that has water and sewer, and then I assume when I if I, I'm not on water and sewer, you I am. So you get a bill and you send one check. That's correct for both. So correct. somebody then has to make right sure that check totals out and that the entries are made to. Water and sewer. So sometime you got to figure out if that effort is worth it, or should you send two bills? I'm not recommending. I'm just talking out loud. But is that what this is related to? Yeah, yes, and I okay. think what Wanacom is saying they are doing that now. They they do identify and classify the different revenues. They assign them to the appropriate revenue code and, and provide the details. And they'd have to do it for every bill individually because you could get a short payment, and then you have to decide how you allocate the short payment. Yeah. And, and, and on and on and on, right? Same thing with an overpayment. Does yeah. that get complicated, Bob? Do you? Pardon me? Does um, the, the, if somebody is on sewer and water and their payment is submitted in one check. That's, it's broken out. Okay. Yeah. How is it broken out? Does well, then, then we break it out of it and uh, it's, it's the bond of that liability thing to the water and sewer. There's an example of it. They, they do break it out into water and sewer. I think I gave you a little bit Oh, at the end of the last page? Yes. Is that what that page is about? Uh -huh. That's all comes <laughs> <up. laughs> I Frankly, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> but, but you see what I mean? I can see there are a lot of stuff. I believe all of these. Almost all of these water and sewer. Um, yeah. Uh, findings or um, uh, items that have um, they've, they've been fixed for several months. I'm, I'm just looking at all of them now, uh, and a lot of them just related to posting and how uh, how it was being done in finance and how it was being done at the water department. I think they're all everything's in sync now. Um, the uh, the first one, uh, Rick is correct. Everything was being posted to one account and was creating a liability. Uh, which we said just post it directly to revenue instead of creating these liabilities because then at the end of the year it was causing, uh, if there was a timing thing, it was causing some problems at the end of the year with the closing. So that, that's that been eliminated. Um, the second one was a refund that got posted um, to, uh, to the wrong fund. Um, we thought it was isolated. We spoke to the water uh, uh, people about it. I believe it was what about seventy dollars. It yeah, was a really small. Awesome. It was a small amount, but we were concerned that it might be a system issue. Um, we ended up finding out that it is unique. It's uh, it, it is isolated, and it's and they have um, they spent a lot of time looking at this because they were concerned also, and they they fixed that to our satisfaction. And then the third one there uh, just deals with the way the revenues were being uh, communicated up from the water department into Munis, and that's been fixed also because they sent us. Some of their turnover sheets to show how they had corrected those. So I think all of these have been um, fixed to our satisfaction. In fact, I think number one we found when we were in almost exactly a year ago, and they fixed that week we were there. It fixed, yeah, they fixed it when we came back. When we came back, they fixed it. So, I think so that sounds good. Why don't we move on? Health insurance. Thank you. Yeah. Health insurance. Okay, health insurance trust fund payments. And this is just a timing issue primarily between making sure the payments go in and they're recorded or something, right? Oh, that's paying the bill. Yeah, Bob understands that more than I do, to be honest with you. On, on the time, on your, yeah, um, the timing of it is not Yeah, um, typically, I'll jump in. Typically, if you don't pay the bill in time, you should book a liability on this because um, right. under the health insurance yeah. legislation, self insurance uh, funds, which you have, you have to do it on a gap basis, even on your own books. So we've talked to Bob about that, and again, that uh, should be fixed. We can go over the entries with him when we get there in June, because we're so close to year end, just to walk through exactly how that should be reported. T -t -t Tony, that should be. But, but again, that was a, 
That's easy. That's, That's done. Right. Just move on. Okay. okay, moving on to page six, the next um, item that had a um, continuing action associated with it was item G, cash reconciliation. There were three items. Aged reconciling items in general depository account. This has been completed. Yeah. Number two, health insurance trust bank account. There were some adjustments that were needed um, to be made, and those are supposed to be done mm -hmm. by the end of the year and yeah. will report to the audit committee probably at the next meeting. Okay, so th there are some items throughout here that, you know, will, Can, so yeah, we want to tick those off and make sure we get them back. Yeah, once okay. they're there, once they're here, um, I'll be going over some things with them. Okay. And all three. Yes. Um, bank account consolidation, that, that's kind of a sort of recurring, but Yeah, every time we close one, we need to open a new one. Yeah. You're making progress, are they? I've closed some, but then we have, you know, last week we got two new escrow accounts, which means I have to open two more accounts. So. And when you say that these are actual bank accounts you're talking about now? Yeah, because escrow, they have to have their own bank account. But then so, you... Excuse me, <laughs> just to understand. So you have separate bank accounts and you've got 20 of them or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and is the money, if the money is invested or not in those accounts? It, no, those are just regular interest they just, accounts. They just stay individual interest bearing accounts. Yes. Right. So you just credit interest on your books when you get the statement. That has its own. Yeah. That, that bank, yeah. An escrow bank account has its own general ledger account, so it gets all there. Mm -hmm. And then when they have fulfilled their performance, it's usually the planning, they get that money back in the bank account. Okay. So those are the issues that, that I, think, I think that's it on the management letter. Yeah. And we'll all make sure there's a better outline plan for the next meeting on the outstanding items. Mm -hmm. Unless there are any other questions about any of the outstanding I just, I just have a question about, going back to the section we just covered, uh, G2, Health Insurance Trust Bank Account, where we're making adjustments to so that the general ledger agrees with the Health Insurance Trust Fund balance. What, I mean, can you give me an example? Can somebody give me an example of the kind of adjustment we would be making? I mean, do we just plug it, or do we go back no, and we find no, mistakes? No or? There's... The, the, the bank account, account balance is, I, I don't know, $2 million, and whereas the general ledger balance may say a million. So somewhere along the line, um, a vendor, I mean, a, a vendor warrant might not have been moved out of it. I've gone back as far as 2000, and that's not the case. So it could have happened before that. So it's a matter of just researching. That's probably what happened because that's really only what comes out of that account is when we when we pay the million dollar bill in, in, in January, in January the million dollars goes to the vendor account to cover it. So that's probably what happened somewhere along the line. I have not been able to find it. Is that so so it's been out of balance? I mean that like forever. Yeah. yeah. So, well, forever. Yeah. By, by the feet. same amount. I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, we haven't had a finding on it before, so I, I'm not exactly sure. But so that's a, a it's... How much is the difference? Maybe you mentioned it. I, didn't I don't know off the top of my head, to be honest with you, Rick. I really don't. Yeah, some of these, um, some of the, some, most accounts don't have to have their own bank account, but certain ones statutorily do because they, um, the interest earned has to go... Um, to the fund. The health insurance trust is one of them. And um, a lot of times I've seen this in other towns that have um, these health insurance trusts. The check will be written from the checking account, but what you need to do immediately is make that transfer from the, um, from the trust account into the checking account because to reimburse the checking account. So at some point along the way, that didn't happen. Um, wherever it was, 2010, 2008, 2007. At some point, it didn't happen. So you ended up with this variance uh, in, the, in the bank account from, from where it should be. Overall, cash is okay. So we're not saying that cash in total is off. Cash in total is fine. It's just when you match up the health insurance trust to the, um, to the, to the GL, it doesn't work. So my suggestion would be just to move the money to make, make them balance. If you haven't been, if you've gone back 
five, six, seven years, and you haven't been able to find where the warrant uh, didn't get reimbursed, uh, just just make it balance and then keep it balanced going forward because you're not missing any cash. You're just moving the money around in the bank accounts. That's all you're doing. It's just transfers. Again, to show what I don't know. <laughs> Why don't we just draw the check on the trust bank account and disperse it directly? You know what I mean? It seems to me we're double doing something. Maybe there's some reason why we do that, but I don't know offhand what it is. It's the same reason we don't do that. I, I, think the, I think the most direct answer is the fact that the Munis system is set up to basically charge one account, and then you have to shift the money around. Isn't that probably the easiest way to explain it, Deb? Uh, that's more of a Bob area. Well, yes. Okay. But do you understand what I mean? Do we have a checkbook? I mean, could somebody write a check on oh, no, the no, trust? No, 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 checks. No. Well, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to... The generates the checks and takes yeah. all the money out of the, of the account in the general fund, and then it clears it automatically in the books in Munis. It's just that the treasurer has to then make a transfer from the separate account, that's the health insurance trust fund, into, into the vendor account where all the checks are but this, this sounds like uh, when we had airport issues in a, in a similar way, maybe on the cap capital accounts or something. We're yeah, dispersing write, money, but we don't get the money back yet. You don't yet. want to write checks on a ton of different accounts. So, I'm not saying yeah. you should or shouldn't. Yeah. I'm trying to yeah. understand. Yeah. HIT is a trust account. Can you get a checkbook for HIT? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. So you can't physically mm -hmm. write a check out of that account. You just have to transfer the money in the vendor account that the check is generated automatically. It does seem, though, with a single-purpose account like this, that it would be easier just to, to not, you ne no, no, money never comes out of this account for any other purpose, right? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I would be interested in how much that difference is, because uh, I assume, well, no, let's see, the money has to go from, which direction is the money going to correct? Out of HT into the other bank account into the general fund bank account. So on our yeah, books, yeah. on our books, the trust fund is sort of a, is it part of our combined balance sheet or it's off balance sheet, so it's separate. So the expense, so to speak, or cash out is to the trust fund. You, know, you usually yeah, when you're yeah, going, going the, back the, to the very specific, it was 2.5 million at the end of the year. So oh, uh, God, Tony, I that's why it's a lot of money. So if we're moving two point, you know, normally I say to myself, um, if we're correcting a uh, out of balance con condition between the general ledger and the checking account, it can result in income to the entity or an expense. And I'm trying to understand, just someone can clarify for me, if we're making an entry for something that happened long ago, what's the impact on the current? It's positive. It would be, it sounds like it's positive. has more money in it than exists, than In the physical says, bank account. In the right. physical bank account. So right now the health insurance trust is making more interest and the That's general it. fund is making less interest. So we're going to take two and a half million dollars? Out of the insurance bank account, but but it's not a gen, it's not going to, it's not a general ledger entry. It's strictly just a money moving entry. It's not going to change your balances in the general ledger at all. Correct. 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 It's not off. Right. It, yeah. It's all right. Munis. Munis cash equals treasurer's cash, and the treasurer's cash is all of the money that's it's in the treasurer's in. The treasurer's so that's in the cash account we're taking out of this existing cash account on the general ledger. To this one, so the, the net effect on the books of the town is nothing. It's zero. It's just getting rid of that very <laughs> don't, don't mean to be a little well, slow. I'm glad you asked that for us. I didn't think that, yeah. <laughs> it's the same as if you, you, your, your wife and you and your wife have a savings account and you decide to buy a new car and so you transfer money into your joint checking account and buy the car with it. Right. That's all we're doing. Okay. Happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Most of go to the stop and shop, though. It's not a car. Well, usually cars are cheaper than the stop and shop, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, at your next audit committee meeting, we'll review the outstanding items from today. Um, and the next, oh, I don't need to take over here. You please, no, right. Move us along. Oh, that's that's right. Right. Review preparations for fiscal 14 
Tony, you're, you're underway. Is there anything else about getting prepared for the audit that we need to discuss? No, no, go ahead. Good. Oh, I have a question. I'll wait till we're done. Any other preparation you need for the audit? I think that's your problem primarily. Yeah, I just didn't know if. Um, I do have one question. Going back to the health insurance trust fund, there is some. Uh, there was some talk about a uh, influx of cash from the reserve fund to keep a reserve in that fund. Could, and could you comment on that and, and whether or not we really need to do that or if I'm misunderstanding the intention? I'm not sure if Tony uh, knows about that. Oh, okay. This is more of a health insurance Yeah, I'm not. Issue. Oh, okay. Well, Forget I the question. When I tell communities, which uh, Cooking Company uh, has been pushing out there, they do a lot of the uh, administration of these self-insured plans throughout the state, mm -hmm. and they feel a balance of about 20% of the expenses um, is uh, is something that um, seems to make sense, um, so that you do have enough for emergencies and reserves and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, so I know that's the number that's getting You've heard this out before, there. like uh, three months or something, or whatever. Yeah, there's right? actually a statutory requirement to have a certain percentage of something in your health insurance trust fund, which, um, due to claims, we don't have right at the moment. So that's the need for the reserve fund to be transferred in. Okay. Okay, thank you. And how much money is the expected to be to bring it? Two hundred fifty thousand. Right. All right. Um, other questions? Is that? Is no, that the one you had? That's the one I had. I'm going to get it out here. Bruce, you all set? You're all set. Okay. I think we're all set. Just Great. in the meantime, your uh, monthly cycle reconciliations just close to our hearts here are up to date. You're trailing out. You don't have a bunch of outstanding items from six months ago. No. Both are all busy. Well, just continue to think of that as sort of the first line of defense, so to speak. So. All right. If there's nothing else, why don't we adjourn? Sure. Right, we'll adjourn. Thank you, Tony and Chad. So there, Tony's going to stay. He's going to stay on. Okay. But the meeting itself is. Meeting's done, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Oh, your next meeting would, if we're keeping with this schedule, would be June 24. 624, okay. Does that, that work? Yeah. Does that work for the auditors? June 24? Yeah, we, can, uh, we can Skype in and we should have. Um, What's the week of our meeting? Yeah. And we'll, we should have a lot of new information then. All right. Thank you all. Meetings adjourned. Thank you. Sorry, <coughs> Two distractions. <laughs> Everybody have a good morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good.